neighborhood and of its people who did not want to go. I don't want my money. I want my home. The old man is old. Yeah, the old man is old. No more. That's enough. I don't want to get out. I, I said to my two daughters, they don't want to get out because they spend a lot of money. Plenty of money they spend in this place. Do not get money for nobody. Never. Hi, welcome to the West End Video Newsletter. Tonight we have uh, Peter Lamoni and John Kavicki. Uh, we did a show about a year ago uh, when Peter, Peter first was released from the prison right. uh, after 33 years of being convicted, wrongly convicted, I might add, uh, of, of murder. And uh, the FBI set him up and they, and, they, and they continue to set him up because there were times when he could have had been paroled uh, and there were people that were fighting for his release and they fought him all the way down. Uh, if it wasn't for uh, Connolly's conviction, was it John Connolly, I believe his name is? If it wasn't for that conviction, or, or what came out in the last two or three years, Peter would probably still be in jail for a crime he did not commit. I mean, and, and this is an abomination that the FBI could let something like this happen, especially to, you know, uh, people that, you know, that are innocent. I mean, it, it's one thing, you know, to, uh, to, to, you know, to go away for a long time for something you did, but it's another thing to, you know, to go away from something somebody else did and, th and then have them fight to keep you in there. And, and I'm incensed. And I know in the last show we showed my, uh, a year ago, a lot of people called me up and, and they couldn't believe that this could happen in America. But evidently it could and it did. So now I want to introduce you to Peter Lamoni and uh, John. John. Uh, Peter's been, uh, it's been about a year now, Peter, That's right? That's right, you, one been year. On? Yeah. And uh, uh, what has happened in the last year? Well, in the last year, my daughter got married. Yeah, well, that's She's true. She's pregnant. She's going to have a baby in August. <laughs> oh, grandson. Yeah, daughter, I'm yeah. enjoying my grandchildren. Yeah. And thanks to my attorney. Right. Or I wouldn't be here with them. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Exactly true. And now you go to the mall. Yeah, I go to the mall on Thursdays. <laughs> we sit down with all former Westenders. <laughs> we have coffee, and then we part our ways. And that's then right. until I meet him the next week. <laughs> Yeah, well, the, the, the mall the mall is a lot of fun, uh, and, and you know you meet a lot of people you haven't seen for years. Yeah, uh, what was the reception you got from former Westenders and other other people? Not just not just well, West everybody Enders. you meet they they say it's a disgrace. You know what I mean? And yeah. uh, you know I hope you get this. I hope you get that. You yeah. know they, that's what they keep telling you. Yeah, you know to to lose thirty three years of your life. Okay, like it's I, half your life. It yeah. was half my life. Yeah, and it's you know. The best years of your life. On top right. of it, it's not. It's not like something that you know. You just can go back and say, "Well, I'll, I'll go back and I'll, you know, I'll replace it." You know, in legal you terms, replace you know, it thirty-three right? years. How are you going to replace what you lose? I mean, you know, that's, uh, that's right. just. It just can't be done. No matter. Right. Even if they, even if they were to give you, you know, truckloads of money, it still doesn't replace the time you've lost. Doesn't it. replace your kids it being can. brought up, going it's to impossible. see them and play hockey, yeah. go to their graduations. These are all things you missed. Yeah. Then your kids got married, they had children. I was never there when they were baptized, exactly. you know what I mean? Exactly, all of and that. And my wife had to do all that herself. She was a strong woman, a very strong woman. And this all came about from the Conley conviction. What, what, what did you think about that, uh, that Conley conviction uh, that just went by, I mean, what was that, about a month ago, a week, three weeks ago? Yeah, well, you know, uh, he's gone through what he did to other people. That's exactly right, right? And he probably should, you know, Maybe they should give him uh, 66 years, mm. you know. <laughs> and, you know, Teddy Deegan was a West End kid, too. Right. Yes, he was. He was and a fighter. Was, that's right. And Teddy Deegan was, was a West End kid. Uh, you you a West End guy. And uh, they just, uh, matter of fact, even, uh, what's his name? That uh, Romeo Martin. It was, you know, yeah, I knew Romeo. He used to hang around the West End. Right, all the time. Yeah, he wasn't a West End, West End guy, but he, he, he was involved in that. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, in the meantime, right, since the last time we did this show, uh, have you received any... Well, from? it's funny you mentioned the West End. Um, yeah. 
because I don't know that this came out the last time, but uh, it shows, I think it was the West End Club that you were at when Deegan came, mm -hmm. uh, Flemmy came looking for Deegan. And uh, contrary to uh, soliciting the contract to kill Deegan, which uh, Peter was accused of, right. convicted of, and sentenced for. Conspiracy. Uh, the reports that we have show that he actually warned Deegan that uh, Flemmy was out to kill him uh, over a three hundred dollar debt. Mm -hmm. uh, other documents that came out were that uh, Henry Tamelio, th these came out in the Bar Barbosa files, which I just got a month ago, right. uh, was angry with uh, Roy French for having killed Deegan because Deegan was a an associate of Henry Tamelio, and Henry Tamelio died in prison. Mm -hmm. He's one of the people we're representing in the lawsuit. Now there are some other documents that have come out that. Um, question the credibility of, uh, of a federal judge, Judge Harrington. That's right. He, uh, in his 1988 confirmation hearing, he was opposed by attorney Earl Cooley. And uh, Mr. Harrington, or Judge Harrington, wrote a letter to uh, Senator Biden stating that uh, no court has ever found fault with any of accomplice witnesses that he has handled, and he never put a witness on the stand unless he uh, could corroborate his mm -hmm. testimony to the fullest extent possible. Uh, and he referred to Barbosa. There was no corroboration of Barbosa's testimony. He was an uncorroborated accomplice. Uh, there was a murder, and mm -hmm. they could corroborate his version of, of how the murder took place. But what they couldn't corroborate are people that he wrongfully accused. Uh, in fact, they knew who the real murderers were. Uh, at, at, in the summation to the jury, uh, the prosecutor said that uh, there were no deals in exchange for Barbosa's testimony and that for him to fabricate such a story, he would have to have the corroboration, the cooperation of the Suffolk DA's office, the city of Boston police, the FBI, and the Department of Justice. Well, as it turns out, he had all of that corroboration. That's right. And uh, because we know two years after the convictions, he's complaining that the, the FBI didn't live up to its deal to give him plastic surgery, get him a job as a VA cook, and mm -hmm. pay him a lump, lump sum, sum of money. Uh, in fact, uh, Judge Harrington uh, wrote a letter to the Deputy Attorney General uh, stating that they wanted to give Barbosa a lump sum of money. I think the amount mentioned was $9,000 so he would not recant his testimony because the government would su uh, suffer a setback mm -hmm. uh, if the convictions of uh, Tamelio and Patriarca, Tamelio being in state court and Patriarca mm -hmm. in federal court, uh, were reversed. So in effect, they, they bribed him not to tell the truth. So right. Barbosa was selling himself out to the highest bidder Mm -hmm. And the, it was the government that won the, won the bid. Yeah. It stopped him from testifying and uh, arranged his release on another murder, which he had committed out in California that's when right. he was in the witness protection program. Yeah, that's right. And, and I don't think anybody, if, uh, you, you couldn't make up a story <laughs> like this. And, and no. you know, I hear you say, well, how was it to be out last yeah. year? And how was it now? Yeah. And, you know, his family right. missed all this. I was interviewed by somebody. They said, how did you feel when Peter Lamoni re was released? I was disgusted. Right. There, there, there were no happy endings to right. this. This is just misery. It's, it's, it right. was miserable for something like this to happen. I wasn't, how, how can anybody be happy about any of this? No. He's out of jail now, so what? <laughs> exactly. So what, yeah. you know, yeah. big yeah. deal. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, he doesn't act any differently now <laughs> than he did when he was in jail because when I saw him, when I went up to jail, I didn't yeah. even know him. Yeah. And I went back and I saw his son. I says, how, how can your father be smiling? That's right. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not exactly. I, I, let me tell you exactly about. I didn't about even Peter. know him when I went up to see him. <laughs> there was no bitterness there. I mean, he, he, he's not happy about what happened, but he's not. You know, some people would come out of that, okay, and they would be in a hole because they they wouldn't be able to get over it. Peter, God bless him, right? He's a sweetheart. He goes out. Yeah, but you <laughs> see, you know, it, for me to be bitter yeah. with you or people you know, right. that's ridiculous. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? I'm bitter inside of right. what they've done to me. Oh, sure. That's positively. But I ain't going to be mad at you right. because I went to jail or no. be mad at you because you made something or you thrived in a business that I could have thrived yeah. in. You know right. what I mean? Yep. A legitimate business or anything. But I ain't going right. to uh, begrudge you with that. You follow me? Yeah, well, I am. I'm yeah. mad because I'm a lawyer yeah. and I practice law. Right. And it's not just the FBI that, that lied and covered up this case. The documents that I obtained out of the Suffolk DA's mm -hmm. office were as incriminating, if not more incriminating, to whether or not they knew Bob Boza lied than what the FBI had. 
And the courts covered up the case, changed the facts around until Judge Hinkle ordered them to open up the files. Right. All right, so Judge Hinkle is the only one that ever ordered discovery or anything like that. That's right. So I'm angry about it because I, I went through this for so many times with representing Greco yeah. that how can I, you know, it, it's, I'm, st I'm angry about it. it. So the, what you see what it is, he's angry because he's got right. a right to be angry. I mean, I believe it. See, Greco was dying. Mm -hmm. He went, put letters in and everything, let this man die in a veteran's hospital. Right. And they denied everything. They would never let him go out. Henry mm -hmm. Tamilio died in jail That's right. That's for nothing. Right. That's exactly. Louis Greco died in jail for nothing. That's right. I mean, these people actually, they passed away for nothing, for something they didn't have no part of. In effect, they were murdered by the, the state. In effect. Falsely imprisoned, right. I suppose, wrongful death. I don't know. The, to the, to that's the, what a point. civil lawyer would say. You know. Well, I'm not. We a, got a I'm case <laughs> going, but you <laughs> I'm know. not a lawyer, or, a, or you know, I don't have yeah. anything to do. Severe with Severe emotional going. distresses. That's for certain. <laughs> but they committed conspiracy, and they put people in there, and they died. Actually, I mean, <laughs> actually, the way I, I think I put in my congressional statement, yeah. I haven't got it with me, uh, was. Uh, was um, judicial false judicial perjury and false imprisonment. That's the way I put it. Mm -hmm. uh, because I think it was uh, Frankfurter that described the uh, Sacco Vanzetti case as right. judicial murder. Yeah, well, so judicial, I suppose, judicial false imprisonment anyway. Well, you know, it's, uh, I, I guess you could say because there's you know, a length of time from when they were convicted to when they died. But if you're under the care of the state, it doesn't matter if the length of time between when you, if, if they, they, they would have probably spent 15 years uh, uh, if, if the death penalty was still in, you know, fighting it to the point where if they were going to be killed by the state, you know, in the, in the chair, electric chair and everything, there would have been a long span anyway. So in effect, to me, there is no difference between them dying in jail, right, right. Of, of, of old age right. or cancer or whatever, because uh, it, they, were, they spent that all under the government's jurisdiction, okay? And to me, that's, that comes to a point where where I have to say that it, 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 if it's not murder, it, it, it's, it's... Well, not crazy. only that, too, they were offered second degree, which meant they would have been eligible for parole mm -hmm. in 15 years, and uh, they turned it down because they knew they were innocent, and so right. they ended up dying in prison and doing 33 years. That's right. So that's basically the issue. And uh, there was also another aspect to this case, and that was when Peter went up for parole, how many times that, that he went up, uh, they intimidated the governor's council. Uh, That's uh, right. Parole board, not the uh, governor's council, the parole board, wasn't it? Uh, was parole the board, council. yeah. Uh, uh, the parole board, the FBI intimidated them. Uh, Mayor Albano from Springfield was under federal inv investigation for I don't know how long. They tried, to, they tried to attack him as a mayor. They came up with sort of Buddy Cianci type uh, charges against him that were never proven. And, and you know, they, they, I didn't do, they didn't do exactly what they're doing to Buddy Cianci, and I don't want to make the same case because Buddy Cianci, whatever he does, is his. But what I'm saying is they, they did that kind of investigations against him to try to, because he was helping Peter. Well, it wasn't just Albano. It was everybody that voted on exactly. his Five uh, members of the board. That's right. They and one of them was a reverend the or something? five of them. One of them was a reverend? Reverend, reverend Haynes, uh, Pina, Albano. And there was uh, Burke. You know, it's one thing to make a mistake, but it's another thing to, to, to make the mistake and keep forcing it, okay, and keep moving it. And piling it on. Piling it on. That's, you know, you, you can say, well, anybody can make mistakes, all right? You know, it was bad, we, we, we did wrong by you. But they knew all the time, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, it, it's one thing to make the mistake initially and then go, oh, gee, you know, we have these records. Well, let's, you know, maybe we can't make it right, you know what I mean? But well, let's let's move it out. But they they kept after him. They kept. It was a vendetta, actually. It was just just they they kept after them until until they were, until they were no longer there. It, it's a shame, and it should should have never happened. I, I don't know how you can make it right myself. I don't know. You know, there, there's no way I can think they they can be. There was right. an article in the Globe. I think it was today that the FBI seeks to uh, reform its image or something like that. I think they could start off by writing out a check. It's not a bad I don't idea. hear anybody knocking at the door to try to give us any money. We got a suit going. I mean, oh, they still you? have time to answer it. Okay. Yeah, there were several other lawyers involved with the lawsuit, and the complaint was drafted by uh, Professor Michael Avery of Suffolk Law School. He's a very, very, very prominent civil mm -hmm. rights lawyer. He's mm -hmm. well. He's world. He's nationally renowned. Well, you know, 
like you say, there's, you know, how can you, how can you put a money figure on this? I mean, you deserve whatever they give well, you. Can they pay you for 33 years? No way that I can can't, think of it. Can't give you enough money. Yeah, just back up the trucks. I mean, and, and no matter if they buried you in hundred dollar bills, it's still it's still not going to take away that. You can't buy that. You can't buy past time. What's gone is gone. Okay, uh, there's no way you can make up those losses. I don't know uh, how they could do it. Uh, unless they find a way of, you know, time travel or something. You well, know? <laughs> in my opinion, see, mm -hmm. from my family, mm -hmm. from a man that never asked for no money That's right. and took the case, right. I'd like him to see him get money and okay. end up with something out of this that he can do whatever he wants. He wants to buy a yacht, do it, buy a <laughs> yacht, do whatever he wants. Uh, but he did a lot of work yeah. and never asked for nothing because when right. he come up, I told him. Yeah. When he when he come up, he want, he want to see my son. Yeah. I says, listen, I've had lawyers, I've had everybody. This yeah. is it. I haven't got nothing to give you. I yeah. didn't ask you for money. Am I right? Yeah. It's, it's over. You know? you, you, you I wanted know. to take another shot at the case yeah. because I knew it was a bad case. Yeah. And so I drafted a motion. For, I had Judge Wolf's opinion. I said, okay, I've got to draft a motion for new trials. I called your son. I said, I'll be up to see your father in the morning. Sunday. Oh, no, you can't go up Sunday. My mother goes up there. This right. is what kind of, <laughs> this is how they thought. Yeah. And so then I went up Sunday afternoon. He comes out. I hadn't seen him. I only met him briefly, maybe about 15 minutes at an Italian American club dinner at the prison, maybe 25 years ago. Oh, sorry, yeah. He comes out smiling. I said, mm -hmm. I want to I do this. Yeah. And so I, I kind of lied to him. I says, yeah, I can win this. I thought that I might lose the case because of what the courts were doing. Yeah. But I filed a motion with a motion for discovery, and then the whole thing unraveled, and I never expected the case to unravel to the extent it did. Mm -hmm. And so I won. Yeah. But I don't feel any better. Yeah. Well, know, I don't feel any better. Well, well let me say this. Uh, anybody you know, that's any looking out there, if you, if, you, if you see, this is a man that took on a, an absolutely unwinnable case and came out ahead. So if you have, I don't know what kind of law you deal in, but... <laughs> Criminal law. Criminal law. Yeah, I, no, he's, he's, he's the guy. No, you know what he said to me? I don't want any me? more clients. <laughs> okay. You know what he says to me? He was at my daughter's wedding. Yeah. And he says, you know the statement I made when people come to me after this and said, mm. you know, are you happy? You know, John, you won that. He said, no, I'm not happy. Yeah. And I says, yeah, I remember it, John. He says, you know when I'm, ha I'm happy now? Yeah. I says, why? Seeing you here dancing with your daughter. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I remember that. But now I'm angry anything. again. Now, right? <laughs> Still. Family, family is everything, especially in Italian households. Right. Right? Family is everything. And, and you go God bless them. They stay with you all them years. Yeah. Well, you know, nowadays, you know, nowadays all they got to do is look wrong at them, and the, and the family gone. is off. <laughs> Which is, you know, in our day, we, we're like sort of dinosaurs because, you know, family was everything. Now, uh, in the West End, if, uh, like, my cousin was in a fight across town, and I didn't help him. When I got home, I know you about it. You got a beating. I got a beating. Now, if the brothers don't even do, yeah. <laughs> that's that's that, that's not even even with brothers anymore. It's in the, the the whole the whole structure of family has so dissolved. Okay, that that it's so totally different than when we grew up, and I can't believe it. Yeah, well, that's a changed world. Oh, <laughs> without a doubt, and that that must be another world. thing from you from you going in from one world and coming out of another with know. red Christ hair and <laughs> red <laughs> hair looking around this city. Yeah, Christ, if you come around here, you don't even know what what, what you, remember you, what right to take. Yeah. How do you get oh, around here? Changed, go yeah. up here, John. Maybe we'll get a right. We'll yeah. get a back of it. Yeah, the whole city, the development that has gone on, the 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 culture has changed so much. The development has changed so much. Uh, right. Every every everything is. Uh, uh, the West End is no longer there. It's gone. gone. That was gone when I was out too. Yeah, but they they still had the other half, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and then that all went too for the yeah. for the for the courthouse, and uh, and we still have the West End house, which we did. The West End house uh, boys and girls club. We had well, yeah, well they had to put that up because if they didn't put it up, then the money would have <laughs> dissolved, yeah. and they got that trust with white on that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And. Uh, you, you were a West End House kid. Positively. Yeah. yeah, my brothers, me, all of us. Yeah, it's a long time and a lot of things. We were in the Marconi Club, then, John. <laughs> that was the name of it. There's still, I, there's still a Marconi Club around, isn't there? In the West End House it was. Yeah, and... Uh, Marconi Seniors, Juniors, and Midgets we had. <laughs> was, was Frank Privetera as, as great a declamation... Yeah. <laughs> Thing is, he I tell you, yeah, he won. He won that thing. We used to, we used to have in the Western House. You had to learn a poem, 
Then we used to go across the street. They mm -hmm. had a hall there, the health center. Right, okay, yeah. They had an auditorium. We used to go in there and say it, and he won. Yeah. He was a good speaker. He keeps, he keeps talking about yeah. that. Yeah, he, 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 he. he was a good speaker. So, so what do you intend to do from here on in? Or, or do you have Prosecute the civil case. Is that right? Do you, do you have any uh, solid uh, information that will move the case oh, faster? We, we think that they knew that these people were innocent. That what, what do you need? Yeah. But, but we just have to prepare for trial. A lot of lawyers prepare for settlement. Yeah. And we're preparing for trial. We yeah. have we have uh, Avery, mm. Michael Avery, Professor Avery, Julian Bolero, and William Kosky are the attorneys on the case, and we just just filed a suit uh, maybe a month ago. A month ago, yeah. And complaints good, are being uh, good, being man. served. Yeah, you'd be in jail if it weren't for Judge Wolf. Yeah, well, because it was he Rico. Knew all them. Uh, well, yeah. I knew from the, his decision where to, what to ask for because I, I could see Rico and Condon what they told in federal court was a different story from what was mm -hmm. testified to in, in state court that convicted them because they said in state court there were no promises, rewards, or inducements uh, to Barboza. Mm -hmm. uh, yet in the federal court, it said that uh, they used Jimmy Flemmy as an unwitting witness, unwitting, an unwitting Jimmy Flemmy to uh, induce Barboza to, to uh, become a government witness. Mm -hmm and a cooperating witness. I forget the exact words he used. So I knew that there I could open it up by asking, for, I said, well, there's no promises, rewards, or inducements, then how do you reconcile this statement? And so then the judge, Judge Henkel, ordered, ordered discovery, and, and John Durham, the U.S. attorney, turned everything over, and the whole case just unraveled. Yeah, that's, uh, I thought that was a pretty stupid move on uh, Flemmy's part, you know, to uh, bring all that in, so you can't, you can't, Convict me because I'm a government witness. <laughs> yeah, what a fool. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I Don't you think he would have done his time? Well, you know, whatever would have happened, it would have been. He could have pleaded guilty to racketeering, every, none of, no, and he could still be an informant and get paid. He and, might have been out by now. Yeah. Even if they gave him 40 years, right? It's not, he wouldn't have 17 murders on his, on his back. You know? <laughs> I just didn't understand how, how he reasoned that one out. Because you know? he's probably been doing this and, and getting away with murder all, all oh, his time. Oh, he has. And, and, and yeah. then, uh, I don't know, he didn't, didn't foresee the consequences of what he did. Matter of fact, it, it turned, even, it, even his own friends, Salemi and them, they, they realized that this guy was doing a number on them, too. It wasn't just, you know, it wasn't just... In court, he, he, he gave up Salemi. He, New York, you know, yeah. yeah. Matarano. Matarano, yeah. Matarano turned around and said, you know, I'm not a rat, but for him. <laughs> be interesting to see if he's saying any more now, yeah. now that he's got nowhere to go. Yeah. I, I just wonder. I, I don't think he's the brightest bulb in the world. I mean, that, the defense sort of, like, uh, when I looked at it, I, I, I couldn't believe that that was the type of thing that somebody would use to get themselves out. Because all it looked like to me was that he would get himself in a lot deeper. Right. But Maybe in front of any other judge he would have. Yeah. He would have gotten away with it. Yeah, it's entirely possible. You know, look at I had a federal habeas corpus. Well, judge Caffrey's dead now, mm. but I had a federal habeas corpus. And, and you know, in Harrington's letter, he says, "No to date, no judge has found fault with any anything he's ever done." Mm -hmm. Well, Harrington's affidavit in, in the case was was the subject of my uh, motion for new, my federal habeas corpus in '79 or '80. Mm -hmm. The case was assigned to Judge uh, Caffrey. And at the time he was deciding my allegations of knowing use of perjured testimony by the Suffolk District Attorney's Office, he had his son on the Suffolk District Attorney's payroll as an assistant district attorney. Mm -hmm. So what kind of a conflict is that? So how yeah. can any judge find any fault with, with uh, any, anything Harrington does if they're all in, in the tank? That's right. Well, it's, you know, he, he was on, uh, after that trial, the Connolly trial, they had him on, and he went on saying that this is a... Uh, a disgrace that nobody ever in the FBI ever, this is, uh, he went on and on and on. I said, it's it's the guy. same thing when we went to the federal court with them congressional hearings. Remember mm -hmm. the six uh, reps right. come up? Mm -hmm. I mean, they all apply, they all come in, they, they, they don't understand how it could happen. Yeah, no. <laughs> but you ain't doing nothing about it. Yeah, I mean, no. all you're doing is having hearings. And yeah. giving sound bites so they can look in the newspaper the next day and see yeah. if their names are yeah. in the paper. Well, that's possibly the name of the game with most politicians. Like, and I don't want to say all because most politicians don't want to get into any issue too deep or too wide. That's terrible. Yeah, they, they, they have a tendency to, to back off What's from... What's his name? Benton? Who? The rep? Uh, 
the congressman? Or? Yeah, the congressman there. The one that... Britain. Britain. He wasn't there. When he said he wants his uh, Hoover's name off the building? Yeah. Well, no. I don't care whose name is on the building. Yeah. Give us a check. Yeah. <laughs> now, I want his name off because it don't deserve to be there. Yeah. Well, I don't... Yeah. Maybe well, it does... Was Hoover, the, was Hoover when... Uh, he's he's the one that had the document. Oh, well, even something. before that one, I think it was called the Bureau of Investigation right. in, the, in the 20s with the anarchists and the sack when Vanzetti Hoover was... Oh. Hoover was there, and they and they used the the uh, to, all this propaganda to go after them. And rather than uh, which, there were some bad people, but it, mm -hmm. it, it they. Well, the Sacco Vanzetti. There was well, if you have it, and that's there's an obvious tie-in because Sacco Vanzetti, right? The mm -hmm. two Italians, right? Immigrants. Uh, sure, they were anarchists or, or whatever they were doing. I don't think it's ever been totally explained to me what they were doing. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, conflicting evidence that should, that uh, they, they weren't the the ones. And Peter, on the other hand, the the Irish mob, uh, not the Irish mob, but the Irish uh, FBI decides that they're going to break the Italian mob and go after Italian. All, anybody with an Italian surname is, is going to be put away. Yeah, but, <coughs> but the Italian mob, if you look at the McClellan hearings, uh, all it was was gambling uh, and uh, loan sharking. Right. right? So they they, 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 they did these guys. They yeah. put these guys away for doing illegal gambling, and look what they substituted for. Right. Uh, drugs, uh, indiscriminate yeah. murders. Flem the Flemies were were, yeah. were crazy and and bulger. In, in the in the Italian mob, if there is you know it would, you know whatever you want to call it, or if there is, I mean. Uh, I don't want to get into that whole question either. Right. I, I don't think it was what a lot of people said it was anyway. But uh, they, most of them were, were working to make money. Okay, they were just, it, it was a money organization rather than, uh, you know, like, let's go out and kill everybody in town and blow up cars. <laughs> yeah, but I think we're <laughs> going to have to address that because it seems to me that that was Connolly's defense. He was trying to put away the mafia. And, That's and right. I think for us to prevail in federal court in our lawsuits so we can combat this kind of... Uh, uh, myth of, of what the mafia is or isn't, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have to explain that this is what it was according yeah. to the McClellan hearings. Whether right. it was or not, I have no idea. Yeah. I don't know anybody that was in the mafia. If they were, they never told me they were. That's right. All right, so we have to combat it that way. And we also have to show what they substituted, what they let Barboza and the Flemies get mm -hmm. away with uh, right. and to put innocent people away. Right. We, we can't say that, well, these people are innocent, but they were in the mafia. That's, I mean, mm -hmm. this is, this is, this is, this is the reasoning behind keeping these people in jail all these years anyway, even because it was, even though everybody knew it was a bad case. Because if you look at all these reports that we have, while well, Peter Mulroney, if he gets out, is going to be in charge of the mafia. You know, not, not whether or not it was a good case or right. they're withholding information. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we have to uh, be prepared to fight that. Peter was in, in any of those groups, right? This would be, uh, they would be bending over backwards to, to make all kinds of amends. Italians, on the other hand, not being a victim group, right, uh, have a tendency to say, "Yeah, it was bad, but hey." <laughs> you know? Yeah, even these even these groups that have their own agenda, these liberal groups, were were didn't help us out either. Because I remember I was in federal court once. I think the last time, ninety two and ninety three, on behalf of Greco, and we had all these uh, rabid female lawyers from the attorney general's office, right. and you could see they were feminists by their appearance. And you know, uh, I guess. Uh, that's that's probably the biggest thing that, that I don't like is that he got convicted because he was Italian of the yeah. Italian descent. Now that that bothers me more than all the rest of it. Okay, and Peter, do you have any last words? And you talk no, I'm words? glad to be here with my friends. It's always a pleasure. Well, yeah. maybe we'll see you next year. Well, we can do it again. Hopefully. I'm happy to do it. I, I right. like it. I like doing it with you guys. You're all right. And I guess we'll see you at the next West End Video Newsletter. Thank you.